Hello friends, today we're going to look at this Bose Cinemate digital home theater system. I got this at Savers for $12.99 with discounts. haven't been able to find much documentation on this this is basically a powered subwoofer system it's quite heavy it's got a AC power connector here which is what I call the coffee pot connector uh, we've got some sort of an input connector here and this one's labeled speakers Here I've turned it around. This says Bose Acousta Mass Module. This is a venting hole for the subwoofer. Not much to look at it on its own, but probably a premium unit in its day. Here I've taken the back cover off and rearranged it a little bit, put it on its side. We got this very large transformer about the size of my fist. Whoops, that makes it look larger than it is. There it is. We've got this large heat sink and probably a five way amplifier because this appears to be the amplifier unit for an overall system with passive speakers connected. We've got this little interface board which uh, power plug fuse this looks to be the power wire going into the transformer power to uh, AC power out of the transformer ribbon cable filtering capacitor of some kind few little transistors so part of what I want to do with this is uh, since I haven't been able to find schematic for the the pins on the internet um, what I'm hoping to do is to take out the little interface board here and reverse engineer that to see what the uh, input and output pins are should be fairly straightforward so we'll take that out and look at those next just took out two screws which releases this little bracket and the board Here's a close-up of the input circuitry. We've got these four little cans, which I'm beginning to think are capacitors. We've got three little surface mount resistors available nearby. That makes me think this is a uh, series of input low-pass filters. Not quite sure. Got a very large capacitor here, 4700 microfarads, 50 volts. That's tied on the bottom. This is a ground area. We've got the shells of the two Canon D connectors. Um, and here's something that's really interesting. <clears throat> Never quite seen before. Let's see if we how close we can get in. Right here in the center we've got these little PC board knife edge things. These are almost connected together. They're like three little legs on each side that almost connect together. And I don't know if that's some sort of high voltage protection that something will arc across. It's a very, very narrow gap. Over here, this straight row, 
corresponds to the outputs and this double row here corresponds to the inputs so after starting here going through some sort of conditioning circuit we end up over here and this part of the PC board appears to be entirely passive just connectors and the only elements that we have on this side uh, are also passive but for some reason this seems like a very strange place to put such a big capacitor because there isn't anything on here that's using power on this little board and although there's plenty of power going on inside here that would have its own capacitors so that's an interesting little mystery to try to figure out here's something on the interior it looks like this part here is actually the wires that go into the subwoofer meaning that if I wanted to use this as purely a passive subwoofer I'd probably take these off here directly maybe this is just a duplicate connector set that doesn't amount to anything so this is passively cooled there's no fan here and that makes sense because you don't want a fan noise when you're listening to an audio system pretty sure this is the output connector these are heavier gauge wires here we have just a cheap ribbon cable which isn't really the greatest from a signal point of view but as far as let's say if every other one of these is grounded then you've got a reasonable way to pass a, an audio signal with some um, you know with reasonably no, low noise that's maybe got some filtering capacitors inside on this part to get rid of some possible high frequency noise so ideally these would be kind of separately shielded and everything but that may not be necessary in this in this case I decided to go ahead and take out this audio amplifier unit hopefully I can just lay that out and uh, work with it separately it might be easier to work with and see what's going on inside there it just has four of these kind of um, whatever you call them, star screws I've got my handy star screw set I got this at uh, Harbor Freight and costs very much money it has lots of different uh, options including a lot of weird stuff the second thought I decided to leave this in when I started to pull on it I realized that these are kind of permanently connected with uh, heat shrink tubing which I could defeat but then that would be more destruction and maybe it's better to leave it in for now we've also got these brackets that are kind of hard to navigate uh, to get out one of these screws might be kind of difficult could be done but more brackets up here oh I see now this is the other side of of the woofer speaker wire so this foam stuff wraps all around here I've got this foam on here which is I assume for acoustic purposes so nothing rattles around inside the box and again this very impressive transformer here's my coffee pot connector I used this in uh, tear down of a Bang & Olufsen audio visual unit so maybe this kind of thing is all the rage with audio people so I get this plugged in through this uh, kilowatt brand power meter we're gonna see how much power the thing draws it's got no connections to it at all except the power Hundred and twenty volts. 
0, 0.0 amps and 0 watts. It's not too surprising or even distressing because this may need some sort of a signal to activate the amplifier um, at this point. This unit doesn't appear to have any kind of an on off switch so the logical thing is that I know they've got an interface unit that goes on to here I've seen on eBay the logical thing is that there's some sort of power control on the interface unit or even further down the line so we'll have to figure that out before I go too much farther So I'm going to poke around with on this a little bit with it on. I know that these two elements here are the 120 volts AC. So we'll turn that on. Got my voltmeter set. But what could be happening, it looks like the fuse is good, but maybe it isn't. So we'll just kind of check that real quick. Being careful, I'm doing this with one hand for safety. Okay, now I'm going to turn the power back on. I just did. I'm going to check across this capacitor. I know from the circuit topology that this is the negative, and it also matches up with the marking on the capacitor big capacitor. So nothing going in there right now with the rest of the unit dormant. So these are these little fingers. The gap between here is a fraction of a millimeter, maybe a quarter of a millimeter. Or in metric talk that would be 0.25. Never seen anything like that before. Well, I think I may have figured out what this big capacitor is all about. It looks like the board itself in there is very thin. It's got some shielded cans areas. Would obviously have power transistors built right onto the heat sink with some sort of connecting wires. Um, and it looks like this capacitor just plain as a power supply capacitor for the overall amplifier board but they just stuck it on this little board because uh, that was a convenient place to put it and it didn't fit onto the regular board in any kind of logical way so since this is a power supply capacitor it doesn't really matter that it's far away in distance any noise that gets picked up is probably reduced by um, smaller capacitors on this board somewhere so I think that's what's going on with this and explains why this is such a big value also when I had it plugged in and turned on there was no voltage across this capacitor and that ties in with the idea that the overall um, unit was not actually turned on it was just plugged in so I need to do some more programming to figure out what's going on here I've looked at these pins with everything plugged in and into the wall and I found that there's approximately 0.8 or 1 volt on DC on several of these pins so that kind of suggests to me that that's the there's a signaling voltage where maybe you uh, short one of those to another pin maybe to ground and then um, that has the overall effect of turning on the unit with some sort of uh, power control switch inside there well, after running into a dead end on getting the thing to turn on, I did end up taking this uh, bracket piece off. 
that frees up the PC board. And I found out that this is actually a connector where I thought I might have to take off this heat shrink and be more destructive. Turns out that this whole thing pulls out. I haven't done that yet, so we'll find out together what that's all about. It's got this input power connector from the transformer. Oops, we'll have to pull that off separately. So after a lot more uh, disassembly work, I had to take this bracket out in order to get this board out. It does have a large capacitor of its own on it, so I was wrong about that. This is 15,000 microfarads at 25 volts. We've got three large ICs that attach to this heat sink where you see the dents in the heat sink grease. So I um, assume that's one for left, right, and base or subwoofer channel. These might even be two channels each in some cases. I don't know if this is a five channel you know surround unit or what it is probably so. This looks to be a power supply for the overall unit here. This is where the AC comes in. Let's see these are probably canned capacitors of a smaller value. It says 125 volts on each of those. These are probably smaller capacitors. I haven't opened the lid on this yet so we'll do that right now. Now for the unveiling of the can lid. Ta-da! Oh, look at what we've got here. This I did not expect. This is an analog device's shark processor. So let's see what's on this side under this can. Actually nothing at all except for traces. So that's not very interesting. Although this looks like something directly under the microprocessor. Let's find out. Yeah, I was right. So my guess is that this is a connector for a JTAG debugging port um, to go with this Shark microprocessor. So the way this is typically done is they design the traces on the board and the engineers as they develop it might put a connector on here and use a debugger from analog devices and then uh, in production they leave the uh, connector off and uh, the traces are still there so it looks like the main purpose of this whole back shield is just to uh, keep uh, you know high frequency radiation from coming off of the board. Also I can see in here there's a date stamp of 92308 so that's probably the manufacturing date of at least the can or maybe the whole thing and then here's a part number probably for the can. This little piece is kind of interesting. It turns out I believe it's a kind of a lightweight heat sink for the uh, D to A converter chip here. This is some sort of spongy material. It would normally go up against the top lid of this can and maybe that provides a little bit of heat dissipation. But it probably can't dissipate a whole lot of heat. I'm going to just pry that off. has what looks like some white thermal stick them on there. I'm going to take a look at the chip. I 
Now I can't see any numbers on the chip with the residue that's left over, so we may have to clean that off and get back. Well, I've plugged a few things back in enough to uh, test the voltage on the transformer. My guess is that it's 12 volts coming out approximately. But let's just find out. Okay, about 4 volts. Next, let's look at the uh, impedance of the speaker that's built into the unit. This is a subwoofer. I don't know what sort of driver is inside that. I haven't figured out how to get the rest of this box apart yet. But as a rule of thumb, you can just look at the DC resistance of a speaker to get some idea of its uh, impedance. So it's very common for speakers to have an impedance of 8 ohms. There are also some 4 ohm speakers. And for an 8 ohm speaker, you would normally read a resistance of about uh, 10 ohms. In other words, the resistance is a little higher than the speaker impedance in terms of ohms. So, we'll look at this one here. I've got 1.6 ohms. So this is not the standard uh, 8 ohm speaker that you'd often expect to see. So just as a little commentary at this point, I'm beginning to lose hope that there's much of anything here to salvage for other projects. Um, We've got this complicated microprocessor section. That's really not reusable. We've got a specialized speaker impedance of, let's say, maybe 2 ohms. We've got 4 volts AC coming off of this transformer, which isn't particularly standard in any way or good for other things. The heat sink that you have in here may be reusable, but even that's pretty specialized because it's based on these little rectangular ICs versus most uh, heat sinks are based on, um, you know, mounting power transistors or regulators or something in them like that. And, you know, maybe another part of this could be repurposed for that. And then, of course, there's the value of the aluminum itself, but I'm not really a scrapper in the in the bulk sense of it. I just do uh, tearing things apart mostly for fun and also to reuse the parts. So overall, I'm kind of beginning to lose hope that there's anything here at all. In the simplest case, I thought I could just hook something to these... Uh, input pins but there's every reason to believe that those are actually digital inputs of some kind because they go straight into this microprocessor section and so what I can imagine here this is a shark analog devices floating point processor for this era this is a pretty high powered processor still pretty high powered for a lot of uses today they still sell these um, and what we've got here is no analog circuitry, so that tells me that these are digital signals coming in here. And one of the mysteries of this is, what is this signal processor all about? Because this type of unit really wouldn't often have a processor at all. It would be strictly passive components you need a crossover network of some kind to drive a subwoofer. Uh, and I think what they've done here, unless they just purely indulge themselves in, in a strange engineering practice, what they've done here, my guess is they're using this for a lot of um, equalization and filtering purposes. This is the codec and some associated parts. Over here we've got our three power amplifier chips. Filtering capacitor for this section. These are probably bypass capacitors for each amplifier. 
this is uh, these are diodes power diodes uh, and this I'm guessing is the overall uh, power transistor that turns the board on and off in general and maybe um, when I wasn't getting this thing to consume any power it may be that the signal wasn't activating on this part here and then we've got our digital connector here that provides uh, digital audio into the processor and this is the uh, connector for the internal subwoofer Bose is kind of known for having high-end stuff that costs a lot but you know they advertise it at least that it's supposed to sound great and they're also kind of famous for having a, a big sound in a small package with some of their bookshelf speakers and so on so maybe there's some amount of magic going in on in here in terms of signal processing but overall um, I just I just don't see it overall it's it's just overkill now from a salvage standpoint my rule of thumb is that the more complex and high-tech something is the less reusable it is and so this type of project if I wanted to say reuse this board that would literally take months or even years to somehow reprogram this and figure out how it all works and it, there's just no case to be made for it I've only got ten dollars in this so that wasn't really the idea to begin with I had no idea this had a microprocessor inside it I knew that it as heavy as it was that it at least had a big transformer in it which is always gonna be worth something and you know heat sink box a speaker you know um, but you know why you would design something this way it's it just doesn't make any sense to me and from a salvage standpoint you know as I said there really isn't much going on here that's reusable this is all very specialized stuff even these um, turns out each of these is a power amplifier chip so there's one for the subwoofer and then one for the um, I forget if these have uh, so these are power amplifier chips three of them probably one for the subwoofer one for the left channel one for the right channel and even those are hard to reuse because they're surface mount and pretty specialized so the low-tech components aren't of much use the high-tech components are typically useless in a salvage context and uh, you know I don't I don't regret paying ten bucks for this I got ten dollars worth of fun out of it already hopefully you got some fun out of it too we're gonna have more fun as we open up the box and tear that apart and see what's going on in there but um, this is kind of a disappointment in terms of ironically uh, a specialized high-tech thing like this is of less interest than just a plain old boring passive you know subwoofer system Well, I've been working on getting this case apart so that I could see what the speaker is like inside it. I tried pulling out this rubber foot, thinking there might be a screw underneath, but there isn't. So we've got this plastic cover, and this is a particle board box of the type that's often used for speakers. Turns out particle board is both a very cheap material and also um, has acoustic properties of a solid, dense, hard material for cheap. But I've got a radical theory of what holds the front on. 
which is notice these four large screws here. Now at first I thought well those just hold up the transformer but what if those are long screws that go all the way through to the other side? So we're going to try taking those off and see what happens. Same thing. Although I haven't had much luck getting this transformer out. So I'm going to make another attempt to get these screws out of the transformer found a larger screwdriver the smaller one I was using was uh, kind of rotating within the screws so this is a slightly larger one that fits the screw better we'll keep going on. reaching a stopping point so that isn't going to work well, while we're at it, let's talk about this heat sink. How that's mounted in here. It's actually glued with some slots here on the side, on each side. And it's basically mounted in a permanent way through the glue and the kind of the mechanical slots that it fits into so I'm kind of wondering if maybe this box is not intended to be disassembled for example imagine if the speaker driver in here is ruined for some reason then probably you throw the whole thing away it's probably not a, a serviceable item everything else here on the bottom could be serviced but this unit probably isn't really intended for a lot of service anyway um, at most you could replace one of these boards we've been looking at but that's probably about it so we'll try something else on getting the box open I've examined this some more to try to get a feeling for how this front panel might come off so we've got particle board here this is a plastic piece even though the texture is designed to look the same. One of the things I thought about is how is this fastened together? And on the face of it, it there might be screws here, which would be kind of the normal way of doing things. So I've pulled together these, I've accumulated these little set of high-powered magnets, and running along here there's nothing that happens but to show you how powerful this magnet stack is you know it's actually quite difficult to pull the screwdriver off of there <clears throat> so we had no reaction that way uh, it's interesting I'm feeling a little something in this direction so that might be where the the speaker element is itself is up here now to do this side not feeling anything there so my thinking is that this piece is actually mechanically captive within the box as the way the box was built um, might be glued as well there really isn't any gap here of any kind uh, by all outward appearances it, it seems to be pretty much one piece there is a slight gap up here which accounts for this is an air gap that I assume is part of the acoustic design so overall it looks like I'm at the point where you either need to treat this as a 2 ohm subwoofer speaker and maybe put a, put a signal in here either from the original board or from some other source 
or if I want to really see what's going on with the subwoofer I can basically destroy this box which would even if the speaker is untouched would kind of destroy the acoustic design that they have here which includes the box as part of an element of that design don't have a lot of money in this could be interesting to see what's going on it appears that I can't free this transformer without destroying it and can't free this heat sink so we're kind of adding up to a situation where the next step is probably just to destroy this box and what my plan is is to this is about uh, maybe three eighths inch thick so I could band saw along the edge or with a circular saw to a depth of about three eighths of an inch maybe in the center of this and that would at least allow me to get to those elements I could see what's on the other side of these screws and maybe deal with that better um, take the heat sink out and I think that's going to be our next step is uh, I've just decided we're gonna we're gonna take this thing apart and see what happens so I've got a plan here I'm gonna cut just past where this panel ends I can expect that that's 3 8 inch thick like the rest of it then I'll end up with an open box I can see inside and then I can replace that panel with a, another um, 3 8 inch or could be any size really of dense particle board maybe even the same piece here and then I've still got the speaker itself with the acoustic enclosure that allows me to get to take these things out for possible reuse and more importantly to see what's inside what the speaker driver itself actually looks like okay I've got everything set up on the uh, table saw and it's time to let her rip Looks like that didn't get quite all the way through so I'll just do a little finish off with a handsaw. Okay. And let's see what's inside. Looks like this cable is glued at this point that connects to the speaker. Yeah, this may be a bigger project. We'll get back to you with a finished result. Well, it took quite a lot to get that cord loose. I had to drill multiple holes here and eventually use a chisel to kind of break through the particle board. And that's because they had glued the cable here on the back. We also see the reason I couldn't get the transformer out, which is these are some sort of uh, nuts on the other end of the bolts that are basically just slipping inside the particle board that they've worn out as I turn the screws on the other side. But for what we're really interested in, here's the inside of the speaker enclosure itself. Look what we've got. We've got our cable. We've got a not all that big driver, although it has a it has a pretty large magnet on it. Let's see if we can have see any specs on that. This is a passive port. It's part of the acoustic system. The sound itself comes out of this part here with this vent on the other side. I've got this turned upside down at the moment. So 
turns out I misjudged the distance by about one inch and if I wanted to really replicate that um, by re-enclosing this I could uh, you know add one inch somehow to the uh, piece that I put on the back or I could probably just call it good and not worry about it now I have what I need to get the transformer out and this does confirm my theory that there's really no plan for this to ever come apart and as you can see I had to do quite a lot of destruction to get to that point so that explains why this front piece is so firmly attached even though it's a different material and doesn't have any screws so you can imagine that's probably wedged in by the design of mechanically and then also some glue around the edge they don't seem to be shy about glue and we may be able to get a better look at this heat sink captive in there like I said so I anticipate destroying the rest of this box this this part of the box is really of no use to me at this point well after a lot of uh, work with these captive screws uh, I finally got this transformer out here we can see the part number and everything on that if anybody cares Here's something interesting. Date code looks like 09 of 04. Now we're going to have the fun of taking out some of the frustrations that I've had on this thing directly on the unit. So, I've got my large size crescent wrench here which can fit very nicely onto the box and let's just destroy All right, continuing with our destruction, I just lost the battery in the camcorder. Looks like the strategy here should be insert as far as possible. general life lesson enough to free our subject well a little too optimistic we've got glue here 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 and here so that's going to require a certain amount of persuasion this gives me a chance to plug my trackball video So I took apart a trackball and I had to use many tools of persuasion. So I recommend you just so I recommend you check that out if you haven't seen it yet. It turned out to be kind of kind of funny as I went through all the drama of trying to get a trackball apart. This is way more trouble than it's worth, by the way. Okay, got the little plastic piece out. Yay! There we go. Ta-da! One last little hanger on. They're kind of they're using it's remarkably effective we have this heat sink might be worth a couple bucks as aluminum scrap value I'm not sure but anyway 
And I learned an important lesson here. Whenever you've got heat sink grease, it just tends to get all over you no matter what you do. I had wiped this off earlier and got most of it and it still got all over me. So uh, I left that on originally because with the idea that I might reuse things and to see how things fit together here we've got these three power amplifier ICs that I've shown you before and those mesh up together here like so with the heat sink grease to uh, help transfer the heat and this goes right into the trash as well as all my other little pieces turned out this paper they used is actually quite tough it's some sort of plastic type thing not really paper so that has a not only a cosmetic aspect but it uh, you know may even strengthen the box or whatever here's a shot of the back of the speaker with the previous plastic piece kind of showing you what might look like when we put it back together as a passive subwoofer if I end up doing that or I might just take the uh, speaker element out completely now over here let's look at our collection of other little things we got heat sink plastic grill 4 volt transformer 110 to 4 volts little miscellaneous hardware and screws processor and amplifier board that probably isn't worth trying to reuse in some any way um, nothing really useful on here either probably the big things that are worth pulling off here are these two large capacitors to try out the speaker driver I hooked up with just some alligator clips to a little receiver that I have here it's set on the FM radio setting so I don't know what will come through but we'll try it out in three two one and nothing Let's try the other speaker pair. Prices. But how do you do this? You don't do this. We do this. Together. Be fast. Be flexible. Be ready for what's next. And bounce forward with Comcast Business. Go to ComcastBusiness.com to learn more. Amazon is hiring near you. Earn a competitive place. It works. Yay. So overall, this wasn't a real success as far as salvageable parts go it wasn't a success as far as something that's reusable except for the speaker driver its uh, speaker itself but I did get my ten dollars worth out of it having fun tearing it apart actually took several hours whatever I condense this video down to and it's going to take several more hours to edit the video so I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and if you do, I'm not making any money at this, kids, but you can thank me by liking and subscribing. If you'd like to see more of this content, I need a little encouragement. I'm not getting a lot of subscribers or views, so please help me out. Thanks, and bye-bye.